I'm seven years sober from heroin, meth, and pills. <sighs> Shit. It's a lot of stuff, right? I know. Um, <laughs> so the two questions I get asked the most is why did you start using drugs and what made you stop? So I think that's a really good place to start. Um, why did I start using drugs? You know, a lot of people say, I always hear this, you don't grow up and dream of being a drug addict. And while that is true, like no little girl sitting in their room saying, oh, all I want to be when I grow up is a drug addict. <laughs> it's true. But for me, all I ever wanted to be was a drug dealer. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want a family. I didn't want anything. I wanted to sell drugs and maybe run a backdoor car game in my basement. You know, like that was my ambition. Um, I also knew and understood the consequences that came along with that. So at a very young age, I accepted, you're going to go to jail. If you're going to sell drugs, you're eventually going to go to jail. So I already, I already worked that out in my brain of what it would be like to get arrested, what it would be like to go to jail, what it would be like to, to lose everything. And also that I was not going to live past 25. Now I've made it past 25 somehow. <laughs> but at that time, like my mental state was, Go balls to the wall, hard as you can, make as much money as you can, get as high as you can, and if you die, you die. I was completely okay with dying. So, why did I start? I started selling drugs um, for two reasons. I wanted two things, minimum, that I didn't have growing up. Money and control. Now, I grew up really poor, and we were always moving around. I got bounced around from place to place, house to house, city to city, um, even one time out to Nebraska, which is like a whole other story. So I never had stability in my life. And growing up, we never had money. So, so I was just as obsessed and addicted with money as I was drugs. And I, I learned at a very young age that if you have money, you have power. You have power, you have control. You have control, you can make people do whatever you want. And that's who I was at the core of my being. I wanted 100% to be in control of every single thing in my life. Me, my friends, my family, everything. I didn't want anyone to tell me what I was going to do. Um, and that obviously created a lot of problems for me. So my parents didn't know what to do. The school didn't know what to do. I was arrested on school property before. I mean, I was constantly in trouble because you weren't going to tell me. Um, so I started selling drugs really young. So I started using drugs really young too. I did my first pill when I was 13. And I remember thinking, this is why you're insecure. This is why you're uncomfortable. This is why you're sad because you haven't had this pill. And all of a sudden, it just made sense to me. So when I tell you guys, like I started doing drugs to feel normal, to feel okay, I mean that. Like that is what made me function from 13 on. Now, it's crazy to say, like, I was a heroin addict at 13, because I wasn't. I mean, I started doing heroin later, but I was a pill addict at 13. I was addicted to alcohol. I don't think you can get addicted to smoking weed. Like, I know I'm going to hear some things, like, about that, but I did smoke weed every single day, and I needed it. I needed it to sit through school. I needed it to feel comfortable in my own skin. So, you can imagine growing up when your brain is trying to function and learn who it is, when you numb yourself with drugs from like 12 or 13 to 22 or 23, when you're coming off drugs, it's like, well, who the hell am I? So I told you why I started to sell drugs. I told you why I started to do drugs. Now this led to almost a decade of me using every single day as much as I could. Now the good thing about me being a drug dealer is I don't have to do anything or steal anything or compromise other aspects of myself and who I am to get drugs. I've heard so many stories of girls having the worst life. So thankfully that wasn't the case. I was able to get drugs constantly. At 17, I had more connections than you could ever even imagine to get drugs. Now I'm not bragging at all. I'm just saying like this is what my situation was. My situation was... I had forced myself into this world so young. I'd forced myself around people that were much older than me so that I could get as much as I could, so I could get drugs, sell drugs, make money. And 
I kind of felt like it was my purpose in life to sell drugs because I was really good at it. And that's so stupid to say, oh, I was a good drug dealer, like, good for you. I know. But it was the only thing I was good at. It was the only thing I enjoyed doing. And after a while, I didn't even enjoy doing it. After a while, my depression and anxiety just ate away at me. So at 17, I met a guy. Now, this is not at all his fault. I was a drug addict long before I met this person, but I learned to be codependent on him. And slowly but surely, I started to lose the two things I cared most about. Money, control. Sorry, I got a phone call and I had to like turn that TV off. Um, so yeah, I started to lose the two things I cared most about, money and control. Because when you're a drug addict, drugs, even if you think you're functioning, they will slowly but surely compromise the control you think you have over it. So I thought I was in control. I wasn't. I would shoot up heroin about, it started out one or two times a day. That escalated to four or five times a day, then about 10 times a day, and then about 20 times a day. And I first shot heroin at 18. Now, once I shot heroin, that was it. That was the end of anything as far as having control and stopping using because I would I would start and I would stop I would snort heroin I would stop snorting heroin I would take a pill not take a pill you know I was I was somewhat in control I will say that I was somewhat in control of my addiction because I thought in my mind I can stop whenever I want to stop I just don't want to until I put it in my arm for the first time so I shot up constantly now this started to make me lose money I love money, and I knew you can't be a junkie and make money in the drug game. You have to choose either to sell drugs or do drugs, and I knew that to be true, but I literally had no control, and my boyfriend at the time was just as bad as I was. He would actually do more because he was a bigger guy, you know, so he was doing a lot of drugs, my drugs. I was doing a lot of my drugs. I was giving a friend a lot of drugs. So what ended up happening is I got into debt. Now, the fact that I would be in debt is breaking a whole nother rule. Never sell drugs for someone else. But, and I will tell you guys all about my drug dealer in a later video, but I got the chance to never have to travel to pick up drugs again. The drugs were brought to me and in large quantities. And I got this deal when I was 19. So that kind of changed the game. So I'm getting huge packages dropped off to my house. Now I was making twenty to thirty thousand dollars per package. So in my in my good days, and that dwindled down further and further to the point where I was only making ten grand in a package, but I owed twenty. So my debt got out of control. And um, February of 2011, I couldn't even get out of bed anymore. I was constantly fighting with my dysfunctional boyfriend and he was lying on me, cheating on me, stealing from me, putting me in debt even more. And I couldn't even get out of bed. I would get out of bed maybe to go to the bathroom, maybe to eat a little something, and I'd go right back to bed. All day long I was shooting heroin, kind of hoping that I would die. And um, I was constantly harping on him. You're using all my drugs. You're getting me in debt. Like, so who would want to be around me, you know? But I thought I could control him with drugs. I thought I could make him love me if we had tons of money. If I gave him whatever he wanted, he loved me, right? Wrong. Um, so, so that bothered me too about my relationship. I thought he was only with me for drugs and money. Maybe. Who knows? Um, so I couldn't get out of bed. I was using it every day. I had track marks from up here, way up here, all the way down to my wrist on both arms. I was covered in tracks and um, I felt gross. I felt so gross and so depressed and I just became the shell and I didn't know how to stop. I was honestly just hoping I would die because how else am I going to stop? Well, February of 2011, my boyfriend robbed a store and after he did that, everyone went to jail and I knew I had to run. So I decided to go to a magazine crew, which I will tell you guys all about, um, and run from those charges. I ended up in Arkansas, and then I ended up on meth. 
Now, as kind of comfortable as I was on heroin, I was so insecure on meth. I would stay up for days and just write in this tweaker book and I weighed 90 pounds and I couldn't eat and I wasn't even going to the bathroom. So eventually I had to put timers on my phone, drink water, pee. What normal human has to tell themselves, remember to drink water so you can pee like me? Because on meth, I would lose hours. Time would go by so fast. And now at this point, I'm in Arkansas, I'm around all these people that don't really know me. And, and my life is just completely out of control. I have felony warrants in New York, and I have a boyfriend that doesn't even know my middle name. He knows two things about me. My name's Jess, and I'm from New York. That's it. I wouldn't tell him a single thing about me because I didn't care. I didn't care about that person. I didn't like that person. I didn't even like who I was. How am I going to like someone else? Um, so it really was a nightmare for me. Um, so on October 17th, 2011, my boyfriend had been up for eight days and, um, we went to sell a eight ball of meth. We have ounces of meth and eight balls, nothing, right? We go to sell it and somehow this eight ball comes up missing. Well, he, um, assumed that I stole it. Now I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a thief and I did not steal that. So... I had that same attitude, like, how dare you call me a thief? For hours, he was ripping apart the house, ripping apart the car, yelling in my face, acting crazy. And if I tried to pick something up or eat or leave the room, he'd lose his mind. Now, I'm stuck in this horrible situation. I'm kind of trapped. I can't leave the house. I can't eat anything. I can't clean up the mess. I can't gather my stuff and just go. Like, I'm stuck here with this person that is tweaked out of his mind, ripping apart the house. Well, after probably nine hours of this, he's yelling at me and he picks up a gun and he puts it to my head and he says, where's my fucking meth? And I'm like, I don't know. Shoot me. You're going to put a gun in my face? Shoot me. Do it. And I'm screaming at this person. Shoot me. Shoot me. Please shoot me. You don't have the balls to shoot me. Now, uh, what person in the right mind would scream at a person with a, with a gun in their hand? you know, but that's just who I was. I, I was crazy. So I kind of see him start to tear up and I thought he's not going to shoot me. So now my aggression is 10 times worse and I'm, I'm screaming and he finally like puts the gun down and I pushed him out of the way and I went to get my stuff and I'm leaving. Well, um, somehow three days pass and before I finally got like a ticket and whatever, and I go to this hotel room at 3 o'clock in the morning because my bus leaves at 9, so got to get downtown at 3 a.m. No, it's like literally a five-minute drive from the house. Like, just sit down, right? But in my mind, I'm like, I just need to get out of this situation now. Can't wait another four hours, five hours for the bus. Like, I need to leave. So, <laughs> um, so I decided, you know, get this hotel room. And he comes in with me and tries to feed me, and I wasn't even having it, and... I decided I'm going to get high. At 4.36 a.m., I pull the needle out of my arm. I look at the clock, and I clean up all the stuff, and I'm really high. My ears are ringing, and I just thought, let's go get something to eat. You want to feed me? Fine. Let's go get some food. We drive to this gas station at 4.30 in the morning in Fort Smith, Arkansas, where there is not a car in sight except a cop car. So... So I got arrested, and I will tell you my story of getting arrested and getting booked into jail and all of that, but I just want to end this video saying, um, at this place, two weeks later I found out I was pregnant. So I want to tell you guys that story in my next video, and I just want to kind of reiterate, I'm going to keep coming back and telling you guys pieces of this. I just want to get this video up for you guys and kind of walk you through why I first started doing drugs and what my experience was. Um, and I can't end this video without saying, if you know someone addicted to drugs and they're still alive, there is still hope and they can change their life, but you can't force them. And I know hundreds of thousands of people are dying each year and no one knows what to do. And the crazy and sad thing is there's really nothing you can do. Don't enable them. Don't help them. Don't give them money, but know, that, but make sure they know that you love them and you're there when they decide to get clean. Um, I never wanted to reach out for help, but I always, I always tell people, if you 
want to reach out for help, no one's going to turn you away. No one's going to be like, I'm not going to help you get off drugs. That's not the reaction. I think we're so afraid because we're afraid people are going to be like, ew, you're a drug addict. But that's just not the case. Um, the shame that you feel is in your own mind. People are not going to shame you if you reach out for help. So if you're addicted to drugs and you want to get off drugs, just ask for help. And it's okay even if you relapse. I've relapsed a million times. So I just want to end it on that note that there's always hope. You can always, always reach out for help. So I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you for watching.